you gotta mute your mic too so I don't accidentally pick you up. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good morning, everybody. This is Jeanette at Trade Thirsty. How are we doing today? All right, all right, all right. Can you see my screen? Can you hear me talking? I'm getting some good mornings and some thanks. How y'all doing? It's the holiday season. I am in Mobile, Alabama, and it's going to be like 80 degrees here today. That's uh, our version of the polar vortex, apparently. Uh, where are y'all then from? Uh, I'm here from Mobile and I've got my partner in crime, South Peters. He's in Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, we're, uh, we're down south. Cold in Denver. I, I hear you, brother. I've been watching, uh, watching this crazy weather all over our country right now. And, uh, for December 17th, it's certainly, certainly a little bit too warm here for us. Memphis, Texas, Denver. Where are you people from? Tell me around the world. Tulsa. 25 in Seattle. Good gracious. That's cold. All right. Well, good morning and welcome to our final Toast to Traders for this year. Um, we do this once a month and uh, my business partner, Hubert Sinners, and I started this company always with well, one goal to bring you great top-notch educators. They'll come in and spend an hour with you uh, and share with you the trades that they're using right now that help and make money and we've got some new people today uh, brand new speakers that we've never had on before it's also um, a big goal of ours is to take suggestions that you guys throw at us of people that you're following or listening to or that you find uh, would be helpful to all of the people in our community and so this week we have Jeffrey Brewer from Pro Market Software he's going to kick us off here in just a second um, Michael Lamar is returning he's been with us once before previously this year we're excited to have him back and then we'll round today's session out with our third guy on deck which is William Gallagher from MTI a um, couple of housekeeping items. We are recording today's event. We will have that out to you probably uh, no later than Monday afternoon, maybe Tuesday. And of course, that all depends on the technology uh, without gremlins today. Uh, we're recording in several locations, so we hope to be able to deliver that back to you. Uh, be patient with us. And if for some reason it doesn't um, record, then just understand that's the way things happen sometimes. We hope you'll stay with us all morning long, though. We only have to Three speakers, three hours of your time to learn some great education. I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic over to um, Jeffrey Brewer. And today his topic is how to increase your overall success rate in swing trading. So Jeffrey, I'm going to give you some power here and let you turn your PowerPoint back on and mic up. I can see your PowerPoint. I'm trying to unmic you. There we go. Good morning. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Good morning. Everybody here, Jeffrey, okay? And you should see his PowerPoint, uh, a swing trading system using pivot days. Did everybody see that? 2020. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. All right, Jeffrey, you have one hour. Very good. Thanks. Um, Today's presentation, I'm going to be talking basically about swing trading and uh, trading stocks. And I have uh, developed a little system that utilizes pivot days and it helps us find the best uh, swing trade setups to work with. So I'm going to be talking about the basics of swing trading, uh, some of the, the uh, pros and cons and some of the things we have to watch out for and then I'll be kind of reviewing this uh, system for you and giving you an idea how it works. Now I am originally from Chicago. I spent the last 30 years out in on the West Coast and when I came out to uh, California I got into the computer business and became a uh, software engineer and so I did that for about 20 years. Worked with lots of Fortune 500 companies, worked on lots of great uh, projects, very interesting projects. So I, I really got to cut my teeth on uh, some heavy-duty uh, design work with big companies. 
And then I got interested in the markets and was able to apply my skill set with uh, programming and also with uh, analysis to the markets. And ever since then, I've just been uh, hooked. I went through uh, uh, the, the rounds, you know, doing presentations and uh, speaker events, that type of thing. And now I'm pretty much semi-retired. I've closed my, my business down. And trade my accounts and continue to do research and development and uh, come up with new trading strategies. Now let's get started here and just talk about some of the uh, big mistakes that folks make with stocks. And, you know, half the battle is avoidance in the markets. You know, like the, the ancient, uh, I think it was the Greek physician code, first do no harm. So if we can just avoid some of the big mistakes, that gets us, that that helps us go a long way in, uh, you know, being successful in the markets. So the big mistakes to avoid, uh, ones that, you know, probably all of us have made these mistakes, premature purchases of a stock. Now what that refers to is that you get so enamored with a stock or the, the fundamental story that you just can't help yourself and you got to start buying the stock, even though the stock may be going straight down uh, in a, in a, in a deep downtrend, big sell-off, week after week, uh, you just can't control yourself. Uh, or you think, uh, you're, you know, you take guesstimates, gut feel, you think that the stock's going to turn at a certain price. Maybe you do some fundamental research and that uh, supposedly is going to be a good value area, something like that. But anyway, so premature purchases of a stock get people into trouble. Uh, the next big item on the list is lump sum investing. This is where uh, maybe somebody comes into a sizable amount of money and they go, oh, well, I want to put it in the markets. And so they just dump it in all at once, pretty much at one level. And that basically is just a crapshoot, a coin flip at that level, right? Markets can go uh, in your favor or against you. Now, another thing that gets people into serious trouble, and, you know, I've gone through this uh, myself in my early career in the markets, is averaging down, right? You have, a, you have a stock that can't do no wrong. It's, you know, the greatest company in the world. And again, you're enamored with it, and it's got all the great fundamental stories. And uh, you've got a position in it, and the price goes lower, and your thinking is, hey, this is a bargain, I can get in and, and buy more, right? And so that way when it goes back up, I'll even you know, make more money. Uh, when the price goes even lower, you're, th you're thinking to yourself, hey, even better deal, I gotta, you know, I gotta scoop up some more. Well, this concept has wiped out more uh, stock trading accounts. As a matter of fact, that's how I actually wiped out my very first uh, stock account. Uh, the first year I traded, I had beginner's luck, I bought some, stocks that just went up and uh, I thought hey this is easy this is like stealing candy from a baby I'm gonna I'm gonna get filthy rich with this the second year in I fell into the trap of averaging down on lots of stocks when the market was overheated and uh, the market crashed and then basically and I'll, I'll, the other thing is I went into margin so when the bank gets all its, its money back uh, at a you know, closing your positions out, you're left with, with nothing. So it's very easy to wipe out an entire account that way. The other thing is putting all your eggs in one basket. In other words, betting everything just on one company because you put yourself at risk uh, with that one company. Stocks, one of, our, one of our dangers with stocks is they are prone to uh, news shocks. Um, you know, pharm pharmaceutical stocks are a good example of uh, they can be approved or, or not approved on a certain drug and that can uh, have a big impact on the stock even overnight. You can wake up to nasty gap downs. And then finally, not using a protective stop. Uh, that's a, the big one. Everybody tells you you've got to use a stop. Actually, there's some folks that argue against that saying stops hurt you, but um, there's not a week that goes by that I don't get uh, a call from somebody that sheep, sheepishly admits that they didn't use a stop and now they're in a world of hurt. And so the best loss is always that first small loss. The thing about stops is you have to have correct stop placement. Uh, it's got to be really fine-tuned. 
And, you know, it's not necessarily uh, the, the fault of the concept of a stop. It's that a lot of stops are placed very sloppy. All right, so those are the five big mistakes that lead to failure that we want to avoid these. Now, the basic concept of swing trading is that we're working off momentum, basically. We want to identify a trend. We're going to basically wait for a pullback, and then we're looking to get in, and we're wanting that trend to resume right, in our favor. Basic concept of swing trading. So there's all kinds of setups that have been invented. Um, I've created two dozen swing trading setups over the years uh, that, you know, work in different types of market conditions. And, uh, you know, we, we basically have two types of, of entries, either a breakout entry or a pullback entry. Right, and if you think about it, a pullback entry is also a breakout entry just on a smaller time frame when you pull back to your uh, uh, area of support, um, the price has got to break back out again, right? It's even got to break that high there. So you're, you're dealing with breakouts uh, from a range or a breakout from a pullback. All right, so the goal of swing trading is we want to capture short-term profit in a short amount of time, two to five days, uh, you know, over, over a brief time, on a brief pullback when price consolidates. The duration of swing trades can depend on uh, a number of factors. We can see swing trades as little as two or three days. Uh, we can see swing trades that last two or three weeks, right? Depending on how your profit-taking strategy is set up. If you're going for like a specific target, with a limit order that gets hit, or are you following a trailing stop? And that might keep you in a stock a little bit longer for a little bit bigger gain. The goals of swing trading, we want more winners than losers, and we would like to see bigger winners than losers, and absolutely no catastrophic losses. Catastrophic losses, uh, you know, you can be a great trader and make good consistent money for months, and then one big catastrophic loss wipes out all that work. A lot of folks have done that. I've done it a couple times in my trading career. I know not to do it again. Catastrophic losses typically come from uh, failure to have a stop. You let the genie out of the bottle and you let a position run against you. News events that if you're too heavily, uh, uh, you know, too heavily loaded up on one stock and there is a negative news event and we have a big gap down in the morning, doing uh, silly types of trades, like taking a big bet on a stock like the day before earnings. There was a uh, gentleman once that uh, shorted, I think he shorted a couple hundred shares of Google the day before earnings because he was convinced they were going to uh, you know, blow the earnings, and uh, Google gapped up like 80 bucks the next day and didn't even come down for weeks. It kept kind of drifting higher. So there's a good example of a, a, a foolish, frivolous type of a trade uh, resulting in a catastrophic loss. So we're looking for more winners and losers, bigger winners and losers, no catastrophic losses. Now, a real important thing to keep in mind with swing trading is you can't utilize fundamentals. You cannot make consistent profits in swing trading by reading a company's fundamentals and acting on an information straight. There's correlation. Uh, the reason I say make consistent profits is you could, you know, try it once and you might have beginner's luck or you might have a little winning streak, but it's not something that is going to work because fundamentals are uh, not really tied to the current price. They might, they might attract the price, uh, you know, three months out, six months out, but they're not influencing the current price. So keep in mind, swing trading is 100% technical. 
Now, whenever we talk about um, system design, trading system design, there is a, a concept that we have to keep in mind is that smallest changes can have big repercussions. Uh, and this is one of the challenges in designing any kind of a trading system when you're getting into the stage of optimization, trying to you know, basically build a better mousetrap, improve the results. You can find, for an example, you can find a, uh, a point where you're getting failed trades, right? Your system is uh, giving you a failed trade, so you have to block those entries, like you put a filter on those. But then you go back and find out that that filter blocked a couple of your big winners. So you're right back to where you started. So it's a real Rubik's Cube uh, with system design, and like this chart shows even the smallest little tweaks can have big differences. Same system, but just tweaks on uh, execution and tolerances and things like that. So everything we do in the market is a double-edged sword, which means basically that there is a perfect answer for any kind of trading technique. There's only degrees of, of uh, accuracy and probabilities and, and that type of thing to work with. All right, real quickly, you know, you've probably seen statistics like this where, you know, stocks or the markets are range bound for a long time in chop and they're only in uh, trending conditions for a limited amount of time. That's going to depend a lot on what you, what your criteria is for, uh, you know, a trending market. And, you know, that would also depend on the individual stock as well. If the stock is really out of favor, it might spend 80% of the, 90% of the time just stuck in chop because uh, nobody's interested in that stock. And another type of stock might just be under accumulation forever from the get-go. And uh, so it's trending, you know, 90% of its, of its existence. So there's no one uh, number that fits, but the main point is that we do get per long periods of non-trending behavior, and it's something that we have to uh, attempt to avoid. Now, the real basics of a, a stock in an uptrend, you know, we may have uh, some key moving averages or support lines or, or what have you, and the stock is basically riding up that uh, support. What we tend to see is we tend to see that you know, short-term irrational exuberance where uh, the buyers, you know, buy that stock up and, and deplete the supply temporarily and, you know, run the price up to resistance levels. The uh, resistance level is created by two things. Uh, short-term uh, traders, swing traders, let's say, taking profit right there. And then just a lack of buyers, you know, uh, folks are looking at their stochastics and MACDs and maybe they're up at overvalued levels, so they're just going to stop buying up there. So we get the pullback. So when the dust settles and this, this profit-taking kind of dries up, uh, price comes back to like a better value area and folks may see uh, the price near support levels that they've drawn, the buying starts all over again. We uh, try to run, we try to break that, that recent uh, rally high there. And this is what makes an uptrend. Stocks that are under accumulation, meaning institutions, uh, the big players are basically buying and holding that stock. Uh, they're eating up the float. In other words, the float is the, the, the available uh, number of shares for folks to work with, to buy. When that gets eaten up, it's just the same law of uh, supply and demand. Like if you went to the grocery store and, um, you know, they only had a little teeny box of avocados, but the price was four times more. If those are all you can get, you're going to pay up for them. And so that's what ha happens with stocks under accumulation. The float gradually shrinks. There's less supply. Um, if the demand is high, and especially with news, you know, you get the, the, the story stocks, uh, we can see big, long accumulation runs over months. Okay, so this is basically a stock in an uptrend. Now, I call this system the pivot high swing trading system. 
uh, or strategy, and it's keys off of pivot days. And so what's a pivot day? Pivot days have a lot of different names that have been used over the years. Uh, you may see it referred to as swing highs and swing lows. You uh, might see you know, some of the older technical analysis books uh, from way back, they called them ringed highs and ringed lows. And that's because in those days they had like printed out charts and uh, you know the analysts actually drew circles around the the pivot highs and lows, and so they call them ring highs and ring lows. Sometimes called reversal highs, reversal lows. Fractal high, fractal low, buying climax, selling climax, that type of thing. Uh, not to be confused with day trader floor pivots is something completely different. I'm just gonna call them pivot days because that's, that's the most popular thing. Okay, so let's just talk the, about the basics of what pivots are. Um, this is very basic technical analysis, but just to make sure everybody's on the same page. A pivot low, for instance, is where we see one bar that sticks down below all the lows uh, previous and uh, after. And basically it looks like a little needle sticking down the antenna. And a confirmed pivot day, different uh, uh, Technical anal analysts will use different numbers, but uh, will a confirmed pivot day according to the books is four days before and four days after. So pivot low, you're, we're going to see higher lows for four days, and then after we're going to see uh, higher lows. Pivot high is exactly the reverse. Little needle sticks up, okay, little antenna, and it's above the previous four highs, and then the, the following uh, four highs are lower, right? So that's a pivot high. Now the thing about pivots, and one of the big benefits of them, is they're all over the place. This isn't some rare, uh, uh, obscure type of pattern that you kind of never see, um, and you know when you do find it, you've missed it already. Uh, pivot highs and pivot lows are uh, on all stock charts. You can actually, you know, do a do a little test, print print a stock chart out, just a little printer, and just sit. You can just draw circles around the highs and lows. And the interesting thing about uh, pivot days is that they are uh, harbingers of price change. You can see here. Here is a pivot high. Again, four days before, four days after, and you can see how price turned. Same here. So if you look at the chart, you can see that when we get the pivots, a lot of times they have a reversal a, you know, prediction capability. All right, now for our purposes, we're gonna just use a 3-3 pivot and we're going to even have a variation on this, which I'll talk about in a little bit, just to keep it simple. So, you know, three lower highs before and three after. Now, one of the issues we run into, if we wait around too long for confirmation, uh, we could miss the move, right? So uh, I'll get to a chart here, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The basic components of the pivot high swing trading system are pivot high and pivot low bars, a downward sloping trend line break, key moving average crossover, and a way to compute the buy points. This is what I'm going to review here today uh, in this presentation. Now, when we see traders in front of their computers in their trading platforms uh, with all the indicators and oscillators and all the you know, Fibonacci lines and all of the, uh, just you name it. Uh, and I've seen some pretty heavy duty, you know, stack charts with, with 50 things on one chart. Uh, we end up with analysis paralysis and it gets complicated. Um, we we uh, want to keep things simple with system design. As a matter of fact, I remember I either read this or I heard it's uh, some relatively uh, famous, successful system designer said, you know, uh, 
a good system, you can write it on you know half a napkin, the rules for it. And I remember hearing that and thinking to myself, oh yeah, that's that's sounds kind of lame to me, because that was the time period I was still heavily into like really complex uh, systems. And later I realized, you know, to keep things to 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 make things less stressful, less work. Uh, we can create a strategy that is very basic. So what I've done is I created a swing, a swing trading strategy that the only indicators that you use are two moving averages. And we utilize pivot high and pivot low bars. We're going to utilize a good old fashioned trend line, but the key is the, trend's gotta, the trend line's got to be drawn correctly. And then we have a methodology to compute the buy points. All right, so real step-by-step, -step, real basic. Charts are very clean, but it works really good. Uh, you'll also learn from this strategy, this system, where you're going to place your initial stops, how to automatically trail your stop, and then also uh, methodologies to compute momentum targets based on your entry. Now, the f first basic thing is I utilize two moving averages that, that are not used. Uh, you know, everybody's hung up on like the 50 EMA and the 200 day and the uh, 21 day moving average or e EMA or, or uh, you know, popular moving averages like these. These are two moving averages that almost nobody uses ever. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen anybody use these moving averages. But I went and I spent a lot of time researching uh, moving averages with swing trading. And here's the thing about moving averages. There's nothing magical about them. Uh, uh, they provide us with visual reference points. Okay, uh, we can, for instance, we can say, okay, uh, here's a fast moving average. Here's a slower moving average. Which one is above the other? Uh, what's the slope of the moving averages? Where is price in relationship to the moving averages? So basically, they just provide us with some uh, good visual reference points. Now, in my research, I went back, because here's the thing. Uh, moving averages actually get a bad rap. You know, some folks refer to them as lagging, so they're useless, uh, or, uh, you know, moving average systems uh, fail and don't work, which if you just pick two moving averages and you, you know, base your buy and sell uh, decisions just every time they cross, then yeah, you're going to get chopped up uh, in whip, whipsaw uh, when the moving averages are not, um, uh, you know, when the market's stuck in a range. So we can't just rely on moving averages crossovers. However, if we start putting some of this stuff together in combination, it has a confirmation effect. All right, and so that's what uh, we're going to see in the system. So we can take the same moving averages that I'm going to teach you, and we can use those. And for instance, if the fast is above the, uh, the slower, and the price is above that, we're in an uptrend. Now this is all basic stuff, but again, the two, these two moving averages are not used by anybody, and they have tested out to be the most accurate on the swing trading time frame. Okay, I did a lot of research on that, and these are the two that I picked. So they are uh, integral to the uh, strategy. Now our big job in swing trading is if we're going to trade the trend right? Uh, which is a good idea. Here's the thing about trading. Price moves all over the place for different reasons. And uh, it's a free-for-all, right? And that's one of the great things about the markets is people can come in and create their own strategies and, uh, you know, do their own thing, right? And there's, you know, there's a thousand ways to fish in the markets. So, but uh, with swing trading, and to keep it simple, we want to place our bets when there's a lot of uh, forward momentum uh, driving that stock, let's say. All right, that's where we're going to increase our probabilities. So a big factor 
factor in that is being able to spot the change in a trend. What happens is uh, folks are buying and buying and buying, thinking that the bottom is getting put in, uh, only to take losses, and the reversal comes later, right? And then actually we get a sizable move. So the trick is, how do we spot this reversal point with a high degree of accuracy in our swing trades? Now, we're going to use, in, in this strategy, we use a modified version of a pivot high, which I just, I call it a potential pivot high, which means that we're going to look for our pivot high bar, and we're going to look for our confirmation to the left, you know, four bars before, but we're going to take action on the very first bar afterwards. We're going to anticipate that this could be the pivot. Right? I mentioned that if we wait around too long for confirmation, we're going to miss, we could miss the opportunity. All right? Sure, we got a completely 100% officially confirmed pivot, but we just missed the, the trade. So we have to be, uh, uh, we have to anticipate a little bit. All right? So we're going to take that as a signal. Now, years ago, uh, this is part of the strategy is my pivot high calculator. And I'll just tell you the story behind this. Uh, back when I had my offices in San Diego, and uh, I was still in the software business, but I was also beginning to develop software for the markets at that point, uh, designing a lot of cool stuff. So I had a best-selling uh, swing trading product at that time as well. And I was just up the street from the uh, the uh, State College in California, and the university had an internship program. So I started thinking, hmm, that sounds interesting. So I went and I got two interns. Uh, one was a math major, one was a uh, finance major, and they got their own cubicles in my office and computers and all that. And uh, I had them for about eight weeks, uh, you know, paid them a little bit of money, they got school credit, that type of thing, on-the-job experience, bright kids, and one of the things we developed, the three of us, was the formula behind this pivot high calculator. I wanted to come up with a universal formula that could predict, or project is a better word, uh, with a great degree of accuracy, where a stock would pull back to uh, after one of its little rally surges, right? Where you see the, the rally and then the pullback. I was, determ I was determined and convinced that, uh, you know, based on factors like volume and based on factors of, uh, of average range and momentum and things like that, we could come up with a formula. So we spent, uh, we spent six weeks researching this. Uh, these two guys uh, had... Uh, we tested all kinds of formulas, we did all kinds of research, and the result was the formula that drives this little calculator now. Okay, uh, the formula is not based on Fib Fibonacci numbers, it's not based on uh, moving averages, it's not based on anything like that, it's pure math dealing with the ranges, and it's quite clever. Um, at first I thought, well, yeah, it's cool, we, we, we've got something, and I made this little program, and lots of folks started using it, and love this little thing, right? And it's real simple to use. Basically, you just put your symbol in, hit analyze, the software gets the data for free, just grabs it right away, and does the computations, and within like a half a second, you've got two suggested buy points to watch for. Okay, so the with this pivot high swing trading strategy, what we're doing is, again, I mentioned it's very straightforward. It's very simplified. There's only two indicators, uh, the two moving averages. And we look for three criteria. We look for a trend line break. We look for the two moving averages to cross over. And these, again, they're moving averages that nobody uses except uh, probably me. Uh, and then we look for a pivot high day, 
and then you're ready to use the pivot height calculator to de determine the buy points. So it's a very re a regimental type of process. Now, how it works is this: once we get once we get a pivot, right? And I, I mentioned that we're going to we're going to go off of what we call the potential pivot, which is the very next day that we see a lower uh, high there, and we've got our confirmed lower highs there. We go ahead at the close, we can put the symbol in the uh, calculator and get the two buy points. It's going to automatically project lower, right? It's going to compute where the high frequency buy areas are. Now there's two of them, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, now let's say that this isn't the pivot high, right? Like this is just one bar and then the next day the price goes up. No harm, no fall because the price will not have gone down to pick you up and there'll be another pivot later, maybe a day or two later, right? And then you just repeat the process. Now the reason there's two buy points is because uh, in the market, remember I mentioned that everything is a double-edged sword, correct? Change one thing here, has influence on another thing. So we could say something like, okay, I want to buy here, I'm going to wait for the price to get down here. But price never pulls back that far at that point in time. It only pulls down, pulls back to here and takes off. So we miss the trade. You follow me? Um, so what we're doing is we're basically hedging our bets. Some stocks that the momentum will pick up really quick won't go into a very deep pullback. We basically have a medium pullback and a deep pullback. So some stocks, once the momentum gets rolling, they'll pull back, but they'll only pull back to like the first level and then we get trend continuation. Uh, some stocks will go into a deep pullback, and so basically we're hedging our bets. We, we want to try to get filled on this first position in case it takes off, but in case we pull back more, we got to go ahead and average that price out. Does that make sense? So the pivot high calculator will generate two buy points, and what you want to do in, in the strategy is you want to plan on uh, being able to take those two positions. Right? So if you can only buy 100 shares of the stock, you're going to you know, place an order for 50 here and an order for 50 there. Now let's take a look at uh, just the, the basic mechanics of this strategy again. Again, it's real simple. This stuff looks almost too simple, but it it's, doesn't have to do with the simplicity. It has to do with how things are calibrated to the time frame and the length of the moving averages and it just all happens to line up really nice and have very good uh, follow through. So for instance, we're looking for that trend line break and the thing about the trend line is you're not going to determine how to draw it. There, I have a mechanical methodology. It's very simple. You're going to have rules on exactly how to draw the trend line, and it's not like you see in the technical analysis books. Again, it's a better mousetrap. So we're looking for a basic trend line break. We're looking for the two moving averages to cross over. And see, we need both of those to occur before we go to uh, phase three. And this is our confirmation that, in fact, uh, we're not going to you know, we're going to decrease the likelihood of getting pulled into like a false move. Well, so we have basically, in, in other words, we have a higher frequency of uh, a new t uptrend starting when both of these occur. We don't care about the order. We just need both of them to occur. And then we're looking for our potential pivot high to start. So if we look at this chart here, we can see that the... Uh, price broke the trend line, that's the red line that gets plotted, and then here is our moving average crossover, and then this would be the, the pivot high, and here's our first day that we can say, okay, that's a potential pivot high. At the close, we just put the symbol into the uh, pivot high calculator, and it's going to generate our buy points for us, okay? It's that simple. 
there's no figuring out, like counting the number of days. Uh, there's, you don't have to try to figure out where to plot your Fibonacci lines from where to where. Uh, you don't have to figure out what's going to trigger you into the trade. You just place limit orders. All right, so here's an example. We're gonna, I'm going to give you some quick examples of what they look like. Uh, we had our trend line break, we had our moving average crossover, and then price ran up. We got our pivot high day. This was our potential pivot day where we would have put the uh, symbol in the software, and then we got the two buy points, 395 and 340. Now here's an example where, in fact, uh, only the first position got filled. Got really close. You can see down here at 340. We came real close to getting there, but price turned around. Uh, in this example, price clanged around, clanged around, and then took off because it's a low price stock. We had a big gains, 58%. Uh, here's another example where uh, the stock that we were watching breaks the trend line. This is what gets projected projected, you're doing this on your chart, you're going to just follow real basic rules to get this trend line on there, and uh, the trend line can shift as well, but it's very simple. It's, you're not going to subjectively figure, try to figure out where the trend line goes. All right. We get the uh, moving average crossover. You can see it right there. Uh, we got a pivot high. Now, this day here, this was the first potential pivot day, but we hadn't had the moving average crossover yet. We got it that day, and then we had a big drop there. So uh, you would have put that in the calculator, and we got a buy point at 775 and went down here at 630. So again, you can see on this one, the momentum had picked up, and we only uh, got filled on the first position, and then before price could take off. Here's another example where uh, here's our crossover. Here's the trend line break that got computed maybe from two months before. Okay, again, it's very mechanical. You don't have to guess. Uh, you'll know exactly where that trend line goes. So we got the break. Now, we did get a pivot high here, and this would have been our potential pivot, and you could have put the, because we bet these two creeks, criteria, so you could have put that in the uh, calculator. However, um, price never went down to the buy points. So no fill, right? No harm, no fall. Uh, later, price popped, and we got another pivot. And this time, on this day here, you see I got the, the, the blue line, the aqua line there. That is our potential pivot, so at the close, we can go ahead and just put the symbol in. It's going to generate our buy points, place our limit orders in, good till cancel if we want, and then notice how price pulled back. There was a fill there, and this one was really accurate. Notice how price came right down and picked, you know, scooped up more shares there, and then if you're trading equal number of shares, you've got an average price right down the middle. The price made a, a bounce there. Okay, so there's a quick swing trade. Uh, here's another example. I got to move a little bit quicker here because we're going to be running out of time. Uh, again, three criteria. We're looking for the, and again, I, I mentioned it doesn't matter which occurs first. Here's our moving average crossover first. All right? These are all daily swing trading charts. Okay, folks. There's our moving average crossover first, then the trend line break. Uh, another example where we did have a pivot, but we did not pull back to the buy points, but this one did. So notice how uh, we got the big surge, we got a big uh, the, the pivot high. Here's our potential pivot high day where we got to act. So it's real simple. You just you watch your charts, and you basically just the very first day after uh, that you think you're getting a pivot high, you put the symbol in the pivot calculator and uh, press analyze, you get the buy points. Now this is an interesting one because uh, it filled both on the same day. This was kind of a climax bar. You can see the, uh, I can't remember what they call this in candlestick uh, chart. You got the open and the close up at the top. 
but uh, yeah, there was a buy early and then uh, a buy on a little climax selling, and then you got a big uh, run up. Now, what makes this little strategy work so well is, like I said, it's very simple, it's very straightforward, but the, the combination of these two moving averages and this trend line break, the way that you're going to mechanically draw it, when price is able to get past it, it it's, it's like opening up the floodgates. This is where, this is where the very big first surge of momentum uh, comes in to kick off a new uptrend, okay? Or at least attempt to do that. And so we get several instances where we get nice trades right out of the gate out of that. Now this, a stock like this could continue on uh, for weeks doing the same thing, going higher and uh, railing and pulling back. All right, let's get towards the end here. Now, another thing that can be done uh, with stocks is you don't have to be a swing trader, you know, take your entries and exits every two or three days. Uh, some people really get into that and other folks want to build positions in stocks. And uh, I, I enjoy everything. I like to do uh, short, very short term trades uh, that last couple days. I like to build positions for a few weeks and then it, you know, get out on a parabolic run up. And then there are certain stocks that you want to actually build a position in. You can do that with dollar cost averaging. Now, the thing about dollar cost averaging is you don't want to, like the very first thing I said, you don't want to do uh, average down. So a great methodology is to actually average up, which makes all the sense in the world. Here's an example of a little averaging up strategy. Trend line break, uh, I'm sorry, moving average crossover, which is criteria number one, the trend line break. And then we, we were getting our pivots, you see. And those were the projected buy points. And so if you were trying to accumulate in a company uh, for a little bit of a longer term run up, and this is a very successful uh, type of a strategy, what you're doing is you're waiting for the, the uh, a signal that the trend is actually changing, right, to the upside. And then you're trying to accumulate little by little. So you could you could have bought 25 shares here, 25 shares there, 20, little by little, right? You're building the position. And the rule is, is that you only get to buy your next position if it's above the previous. So that makes sure you don't average down. Basically, it means that your stock's performing. It's pulling the money in, right? If you had a basket of five stocks like this, then uh, only the stocks that perform are going to actually pull the money in. If you think about it, right, it's kind of a self, um, uh, you know, running system as far as where the money goes. So what stocks tend to do is they, they tend to uh, have a big trend shift. They tend to build some uh, momentum. You can see there's kind of a flat top here. And then the big breakout and parabolic run up. And so if you can, over months and months, you can build a position and then basically just wait for that stock to go uh, ballistic. The pivot high swing trading system is ideal for short term swing traders, two to five days. You're going to find really nice setups. You don't have to hunt around for all kinds of crazy setups that, that uh, uh, people come up with. Short term position traders where you want to kind of uh, maybe build a little position for a few weeks and hold on to it and maybe use a trailing stop if the stock's really on a run. And then the longer term dollar cost averaging if you're an investor that you actually want to build a position. I mentioned one of the mistakes is you don't want to be a lump sum of it. investor. Best way to get money in the market is to average it in gradually. Now the benefits of using this pivot high swing trading system is Right away, you're going to simplify your swing trading approach. You're going to find, uh, you're going to follow a well-defined plan. You'll be able to increase your success rate. It's very easy to implement. There's no fancy indicators. Like I said, you're going to have a totally clean chart with two moving averages, and you're going to draw a trend line. Easy on your nerves. Very easy to follow this strategy because it's very mechanical. Uh, there's no guesswork. One really nice thing about it is it's, uh, you can pyramid it. So in other words, you can start off really light, 
no matter how big your account is. And over time, maybe you spend two months trading at one level, and if you're if things are working out great, you go to a higher level. The, all the trades, you can basically trade the same uh, size, but gradually increase that size over time. So your final goals as uh, to become a profitable trader are, A, know when to stay out of a stock. So we're going to know that with this system because as long as the stock is below that overhead resistance line and the slow moving average uh, is above the fast moving average, you're not in that stock. You'll know exactly when to start looking to get in and you'll know at what price to buy that stock. Okay, because the pivot high calculator computes out the buy points. Now what I've done is uh, I created an, uh, a, uh, a unique little um, app here and it's a combination, it's a program, a combination training app with the calculator built in. So uh, on the main screen, you're going to have three lessons that actually go through the whole uh, strategy and show you how to implement it. You're going to learn what the moving averages are. You're going to learn the rule, the mechanical rules to draw the correct trend line. And then you're going to have the calculator to use to uh, be able to plot your buy points. Very straightforward system. Uh, you're either out of the stock or you get the, the trend line break and the moving average crossover and then you're looking for that first pivot, potential pivot high. You put the symbol in the in the calculator, boom, you got buy points. It's that simple. It's, it's uh, you know, not a lot of analysis required. So you're going to get a complete, easy to implement swing trading system. You get the pivot high calculator built in. I'm going to be doing a live group training on Saturday, January 7th. So the, we'll let the holidays go by. And uh, another thing here that I didn't talk about too much is one of the lessons is how you can scan for the best candidates to trade. The whole entire lesson is how you can go to uh, a website, put in some parameters, and you're going to get stocks uh, automatically come out in a scan that are right at the point where they've probably already broken the trend line and uh, you have a moving average crossover and you're right at the point where you can put the symbols in and start getting your buy points. So that's a very useful uh, lesson as well. You'll learn how to spot the trend shift, you'll learn how to scan for the stocks, and you'll learn how to place the entries. I mentioned also that you're going to understand where to put your stop. Uh, I got a, a couple really cool methodologies to trail the stop. Okay, uh, and that's my presentation. I think I'm out of time here. Now let's see if I can answer any questions real quick. I think I have uh, five minutes left. Yeah, Jeffrey, you can keep going. You can go till about three after because we started late. So um, can you okay. see the questions? Sure. I'm going to kind of work backwards through them. Okay, perfect. I'm right here. And your offer link, I don't see your, uh, is your offer link swingtradingclub.com? That's just on your slide there. Okay, so the question, one of the questions is, what are the moving averages? Well, that's what you're going to learn in the, the uh, course. Um, they're unique moving averages. Like I said, nobody uses them probably but me. Uh, and uh, But they're integral to this strategy because not only do, um, not only are they uh, optimized the best for the swing trading, uh, you know, the trend shift, they also help us draw our trend line. So I'm getting all the typical questions like what's your uh, average win-loss ratio. Here's the thing, folks. Uh, whenever you uh, have a system like this and you have so many different ways you could trade it, uh, you can't answer that question, right? 
I showed you that you could be a you could be a short-term swing trader and take your profits in a couple days. You could try to accumulate shares. Uh, so you, we have to define all the parameters of exactly how we would trade these signals, right? How we would trade these entries. So that's not a cop out. That's just the way it is. Uh, also, things like depend, you know, where. How are you going to trail the stop? There's different ways you could trail the stop based on how you want to play the trade. Uh, I will tell you this, and again, I could have spent another hour today going through lots of different details, but time is limited, so uh, I, there's things I had to leave out. But uh, basically, if you follow the, all the mechanical rules, you can s expect seven out of ten winners. Okay. Now, again, what I stressed in the beginning was that we want more winners than losers, but we also want our winners to be bigger than the losers. So if you trade a strategy like this for a whole year, and then you tabulate all your winners and losers and you average them out, you want to see your average winner was always bigger than your average loser. All right, that's one of the goals. Uh, I knew this question was going to come up. Does it work to short stocks? Uh, well, it could, but I, I've designed it mainly for uh, going long. It's not that I, I'm afraid to short or anything like that. Uh, I short the markets all the time. I day trade the futures market. I'm shorting all the time. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with uh, keeping everything real simple. And the other thing is uh, stocks go down differently than they go up. You may maybe you've heard that before. Not everything is a mirror image. So the pivot high calculator, the formula, uh, while it's very fine-tuned for stocks in an uptrend, we'd need a different formula for stocks in a downtrend, which just doesn't it just doesn't compute the same way. Uh, how to know there is a trend line break? Uh, yeah, price just is going to cross the, the, the trend line. But again, like I said, it's not just a standard trend line that you're going to try to draw on your own. There's a, a very specific uh, set of rules to draw the trend line. And what's nice about that is, again, it makes there's no guesswork. You're not going to accidentally draw the wrong trend line. That was I built that into this little strategy on purpose. Uh, everything I put into this strategy, this little uh, system, was uh, designed to keep it really simple. All right, I wanted to I wanted to create a system just overly simple, overly clean charts. You don't have to look at stochastics. You don't have to look at uh, uh, MACDs, any of that kind of stuff. Like I said, it's only these two key moving averages, the unique trend line, and then the pivot high calculator, boom, you've got a, you've got a swing trading system. And again, folks, you know, I could, I could uh, go through the details of all this strategy for six hours, uh, but we just have limited time, so there's, uh, you know, a lot of stuff I can't really get too much into. All right, I'm going through the questions here. Yeah, somebody's commenting here. Fundamentals are often based uh, baked into the price. Yeah, that's good comment. Uh, question: What if pivots happen more or less frequently? Uh, here's the thing: uh, pivots, and I'm not gung ho on them, or I didn't, you know, that pivots are not like my life work or anything like that. It's just something in system design. I finally said to myself one day, you know, these dang pivot days are everywhere, and they seem to have an influence on things. So maybe I should figure out how to integrate them into, you know, an actual working strategy. And uh, they work really well. They, you're going to see when you go through this course, we use them. We're going to use these pivots for several different things. They're going to help us with moving our stops in some instances, um, uh, that type of thing. But the reason I call this the pivot high swing trading uh, uh, strategy, of course, is because you key off that first 
potential pivot day. And that's where you just get to go to the calculator and uh, you know, figure out your buy points. The other nice thing about this strategy that helps it stay really straightforward, real simple, is you're not going to be concerned with wiggles and you know narrow range days and you know did the price you know, have three lower lows? Uh, did the price break the previous day's high? You're not going to have to worry about any kind of confirmation uh, uh, business like that at all. Uh, this is a, a great strategy where you can basically just put your limit orders in. Um, and you know, if you're off uh, busy uh, doing something, you'll get filled or not, right? And obviously, you want to make sure that it stops going somewhere. But uh, how do you know if it's a pivot high? Yeah, I kind of went over that in detail a bunch of times. Uh, will you address the downtrend entry? Hmm. Not sure what that question is. All right. I think I might have. If I missed your question, folks, I'm sorry. You can uh, you can get a hold of me through uh, uh, the the representatives there at Trade Thirsty, and uh, they can get your questions to me. Uh, that looks like it. If any, any anybody has any further questions, you can get a hold of me. All right, Jeffrey, thank you so much for spending your morning with us. Um, his offer link, uh, one more question I see is, how long is um, is access to the system? So is it when they pay the $97, what, what all are they? Yeah, this is a, once you, uh, once you get the system, it's yours. Uh, and you'll get all upgrades for free. Um, you know, uh, I tend to... Uh, make things better over time. I'll, I'll, I'll come out with upgrades and, and uh, maybe throw some bells and whistles and extra things. Uh, I actually have an idea to build a little uh, uh, price target projection uh, calculator as well that I'll probably slap in here. Uh, but yeah, your uh, lifetime uh, um, product, you get the upgrade for free, any upgrades for free. And like I said, one of the key things that is a, is a big part of this is the lesson on how you're going to scan. The uh, Pivot High calculator gets the data for free, so there's no connections you've got to pay for. Uh, it just works straight out of the box. Uh, if you take advantage of this today, uh, I'll, I'm going to be personally making sure you get set up later today. And uh, you'll have all of the uh, installation documentation you need to get set up properly. All right. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you, like I said, taking time out of your Saturday and spending this hour with us. Everybody give, give it up for our friend Jeffrey Brewer for taking time out of his, uh, his private Thanks time because it's Saturday. <laughs> no Thanks, problem. Bye -bye. Let, me, uh, let me go ahead and dismiss you.